In this video, we are going to go over the Postman collection format, what you can do with the format, and how to write a collection from scratch in JSON. I'm in a collection called Sample, and I'm going to export this collection. I'll open this exported collection in my browser. And going over the exported JSON, I can see that this JSON contains all the information about my collection. It contains the name of my collection. I, I can see my request. I can also see that the request has a method of get. I can also see the URL of that request. This JSON is the basis of collections in Postman, and it can be referred to as a collection format. The collection format is a lightweight human and machine readable format that allows us to organize API requests and model API workflows exactly what you do with collections in Postman. We are going to be going over the basic structure of the collection format and what it does. Now, navigate to the documentation of the collection format that can be found at learning.postman.com slash collection format. This documentation is a great place to get started if you want to learn about the collection format and the interesting things you can do with it. Some of the things that you can do with the collection format is it allows you the exported JSON can be run on your continuous integration pipeline using a command line tool called Newman. You could also run it within your development workflow as a library. Newman allows you to do that. Other interesting things you can do with a collection format is to generate code, both code snippets and complete SDKs, or convert to and from other API specifications. Let's take a look at some of these things. Back in my collection here, if I click on this request, on the right sidebar, if I click on this code icon here, I can see some code snippets that has been generated. Uh, this one makes use of Java, uh, it's a fetch request. And this code snippet here allows me to run this request within my development workflow. Now I can generate this code snippet in any language of my choice. I can select it in Node.js, I could select PHP and a code snippet will be generated here for me. This is only possible because of the collection format and the library that does this is open source. So you can also do it programmatically within your development workflows. Another thing that you could do with the collection format is to generate Markdown documentation from your collection. This documentation here that is in Markdown was automatically generated from a collection. And this is good for, let's say you want to include a readme in your code repository you can easily generate a markdown from your collection and use that as a good starting point for your readme. One other interesting thing that you could do is to convert to and from other API specification. In this example here, the collection on my left hand side is being converted to an open API definition on the right hand side. The library used in all the examples shown are open source and I would include a link to them in the description below. Now let's go back to the documentation and would show the basic structure of a collection. I'll navigate to the structure of a collection section here and scroll down to this diagram. This diagram represents the basic structure of collection as nodes connected to each other. Each node here is an object. We can see that the collection object here has three child nodes, the info object, the item object, and the item group. The info object contains metadata information about this collection. If I come back to my exported collection here, I can see that the info object contains the name and the schema. It can also contain the description of that collection. The item object here contains a request and other things associated to that request. In my example collection here, we can see that this request has an example request saved to it, and I can have multiple examples saved as re um, multiple examples saved as responses to this request. So the responses here is an array of example responses to this request. Events here are just pre-request and test script. The item group is can be thought of as a folder. Now it's a folder means it can contain other folders or item groups or it can contain other items or requests. So the same way in my collection here, I can add a folder, and inside this folder, I can add a new request, or I can add another folder inside this folder. This is an item group. Now if we navigate to 
the section talking about how we can define a simple API in a collection, we can see that exactly what we saw in that diagram is what we have here. We have an info object and we have an item object. This basic collection does not have an item group. It doesn't have a folder. A request here is represented as a string, but it can be a much more complex object. If we navigate to this concept section and we take a look at this section that talks about the structure of a request, we can scroll down to see that a request can contain a URL, a description, the request method, the request body, the request headers, and a lot of other useful information. Now, what we want to do now is we want to use this documentation as a guide and try to alter a collection from scratch. Now, we'll navigate to VS Code, where I have created a file called collection.json. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to write this same collection from scratch and import it back into Postman. So I'm going to create an object. And now previously I said the collection has three major objects, right? The info object, the item object, and the item group. I'm going to be only be dealing with info and item objects here. So I'll add the info object and an item object. the info object I'll give my collection a name I'll call this new collection in JSON I'll give it a description And I'm going to define a schema for this collection. Now you should note that the schema property is a compulsory field as defined by the collection format. So I'm just going to copy the schema here. And paste that here. Then save. Now in the item here, an item can contain both a request object and a response object but i'm going to be leaving the response object empty now in the request object going back to the documentation i can see that i can define a url give it a description give it a request method etc so the first thing i'm going to define is a url and i'm going to use the same example here I'm just going to copy the entire request object from here and use that instead of writing it by hand. Now I'll save this collection and I'm going to go back to Postman and import that collection that I just altered. had a typo here but you can see that the collection that i just imported that i just altered has been imported into postman and i have this untitled request here because i didn't give my request a name and you can see that this request has my url and if i navigate to the request body you can see that it has the request body i specified 